Did you know that 13 million brakes are made each year by Tektro TRP? Did you know that that takes 3,200 tonnes of aluminium? Did you know that Tektro have 160 CNC machines and that no one needs to operate them? See, that last bit wasn't true. Everyone was just at lunch. Did you know that Tektro and TRP have won multiple World Cup, World Championship and Olympic medals under the likes of Niels Albert and Aaron Gwynn here? But did you also know that they've won countless titles having made breaks for other people as well? Did you know that 1,200 people work here? No? I think we need to find out a little bit more. As part of our mini tour of Taiwan to look inside the bike industry, we've stopped by to see the folks at Tektro TRP, to see how they do things. From making 5 million hydraulic disc brakes per year, right through to the advanced R&D facility that helps them create products for riders like Aaron Gwynn. Come on, you know who Aaron Gwynn is. Mountain bike legend. You know, the guy that won a downhill World Cup, even though he snapped his chain on the second pedal stroke. Yeah, that guy. Now, in total, they have three manufacturing facilities, two in China that handle the more entry-level market, and then this one here in Taiwan, which acts as their global headquarters and where all the advanced manufacturing high-end brakes are made. Now, if you are confused as to why some parts say Tektro and some say TRP, and yet I'm talking about Tektro slash TRP in the same breath, it's because although they're two distinct brands, they are inextricably linked. So think kind of Toyota and Lexus. Tektro was launched back in 1986, and then TRP came in 2006, aimed as the high-end brand. Right then, let's go and see how brakes are made. Before we start making anything, we of course need a design. So we've come to the upper floors to see that happen. Magic key card. Okay, so there's about 25 people work in this particular part. There's actually another 30 people down the road in an advanced R&D facility who are looking further into the future. But when you look around here, you actually get a real feel of what goes on. There's prototype breaks everywhere you look. And some things that I hadn't expected to see as well, like this. So random time trial and aerodynamic frames knocking around. And that's for a very good reason, in that all the kind of integrated brakes that you see now, 90% of them are likely to have been made right here at the Tektro TRP facility. So let's have a look at the process. We've got people like Gerin here, who is working very studiously on a prototype e-bike brake. Now he's just working on CAD there. One of the beautiful things about everything being done in-house is that everything is literally done right here so he could press print hypothetically and just down here the brake gets printed ta-da the 3d printing room so within just a few hours it can go from that cad drawing to this which is a working prototype have a look at that printed in clear resin you'll see on this e-bike brake, it's quad piston. So actually a lot of technology from mountain bikes learned through sponsoring Aaron Gwynn will end up on a product like this. So even though it's going nowhere near a downhill track, nowhere near a race, all of that technology does have a purpose for the general consumer. Now, that of course cannot really be used. So we next need to get something like this made out of aluminium. And to see that happen, we need some heavy machinery. Oh yeah. Quick change of location and a definite change of gear. This is where the raw materials hit the factory. Uh, you can see though, it's not just giant lumps of aluminium. This one has been extruded by another company to Tektro specifications. You should probably recognize that. Yeah? No? Basically, this then gets chopped into more manageable pieces like this. I'm quite glad as well, because that's really heavy. Now, a little bit of extruded aluminium doesn't stay like this for long. Its journey continues in here where it gets hot forged, which is a particularly painful but fortunately quite short-lived process. 
So you'll see all of the tooling here, the various different components that Tektro make. Basically, extrusions like this will fit in and then it gets heated up to between 180 and 200 degrees Celsius and then stamped with 400 tonnes. Let's go and have a look. Now you see if you look down the production line that most of these forges are operated manually. This one here is the first step in automating the whole process. So this robot takes our hot aluminium, pops it on that tool in there, where it then gets forged and then put back. It's pretty hardcore work to be fair. Stamping. So this is what comes out of the hot forge, but this is what we need. So very simply, this gets placed in, punched out, and we're left with something very much resembling great caliper. Through this doorway, and you'll notice a distinct change of pace, and that's because we're going away from our heavy machinery and more towards our precision machining. And there's a really high level of automation here, a lot of very sophisticated robots. I've been told that this robot really likes watching GCN. How do you do? Now the reason why robots are so important here is because of the incredibly high tolerances to which they operate at. And that's particularly critical when you're talking about hydraulic brakes. So to put it in context, we'll go over to this machine, which is doing quality control on the pistons, right? So this little laser beam there measures the exact dimensions of each piston and if it detects that one of them is just 0.04 millimeters out in any orientation then a little jet of air will blast it into oblivion where it then gets recycled and then all the good ones come down here tumbling get your finish on your brakes Little ceramic doodads. We're moving from manufacture now to assembly. On this floor alone, there are 100 steps to actually make a hydraulic brake, which seems quite remarkable, doesn't it, really? And what was news to me was that almost everything that goes into a TRP hydraulic brake is actually made right here. In fact, it's easier to tell you what they don't make than what they do make. So somebody else makes their rotors, they contract that out. The bolts are made somewhere else, and also the hoses, which, incidentally, I love this little machine. They're currently being cut to length. Now, you might think that's a bit weird. Why would you need a machine to do that? But if a bike brand comes to Tektro TRP and says, we want to buy a 1,000 brakes, and we've got them on this bike in five different sizes, they give the length to Tektro TRP, and their machine will cut it to five different lengths. So, saving loads of time. How cool is that? So we've assembled our brake, it's been bled. This next step is almost unbelievable. Every single hydraulic brake that comes out of Tektro TRP goes through the same quality control process. Literally every brake will go onto a machine like this where it's squeezed 250 times and then squeezed for 400 seconds before being taken off, left to rest like a fine wine for 72 hours before being brought back going through exactly the same thing. And what they're looking for is that just in case all the previous quality control hasn't quite picked up one last bit, which will mean that potentially a drop of oil leaks out. This, this will make sure that those brakes do not hit the market. You ready? <laughs> 225, 224, 223, 222, 221. Say, this is a paint shop. Some brakes come in to be anodized, others are painted. Clearly, this is where the painting happens. Hello. 
So one anodized brake caliper ready now for laser etching. Okay. I can't get enough of laser etching. Whoa. That is awesome. Check it out, a GCN brake caliper. There we go then, your finished article. I feel emotionally quite invested in this now we've seen it from an extruded piece of aluminium to the finished product. But there you go, that's what you're gonna find on your bike shop shelf. Now, despite the fact that we are leaving Tektro TRP with a finished article, there is still one very important place that we've got to go on our journey inside this brand, and that is the advanced R&D facility, which is about 30 minutes down the road. That's where they not only design products like this, but they are looking well into the future. So I wonder whether we're going to get a sneaky peek of what's to come. Now, you know you're in an advanced R&D facility when you get asked to take your shoes off at the door. I wish I'd known that this morning when I went to put my socks on, but never mind, you live and learn. Here is a very, very swish office, I think you'll agree. It's separate from the rest of the factory because in order to recruit the very best engineers, they needed to locate it in downtown Taichung, where people don't have to commute half an hour to get to work. Now in here, we've got all of the top engineers and they are working three years down the line, I'm told. And everyone has been very suspicious and secretive because as we walked in here, there was a flurry of activity whilst everyone tidied up. I have no idea what they were tidying up, but I suspect it's good. Flip flops off. There we go. From our 22nd floor balcony, we can conclusively say then, that is how you make a break. From a beginning, technically, which is at the end, all the way through to the finished product. And we've got to say a massive thank you to Tektro TRP for inviting us out here and giving us such amazing insight. Do make sure you subscribe to GCN. If you want to see more of this kind of factory tour, we've always got loads on the channel. To do so, just click on the globe. It's completely free. And if you want to watch a couple more videos, firstly, you can check out those Aaron Gwynn brakes on a GMBN bike check. That one is just down there. Or for something for roadies, how about how to brake like a pro. That one's just down there.